So just a quick forward here. There was what I would call a breakdown in communication between the marketing team for the light product that is in this and myself. So rather than scrap the whole video, I'm removing all references to their company. If you are interested in the lights in this video, I will leave a descriptor in the comments so that you can find similar products that will fulfill this same role. Essentially what you're looking for is a high wattage halo grow light. Check out the first comment for more information. Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm going to be reviewing these. These are the full spectrum halo grow lights they are an indoor plant grow light, and I'll also be releasing these. These are the Hooch Multi-Bucket self-watering pot 3D print, which allow you to adapt the Hooch Multi-Bucket into a self-watering pot planter device. As you can see, my indoor plant obsession has kind of reached new and unprecedented Highs. It's getting silly. I'm maxing out the space that I've got on this set and it's getting quite expensive actually. Future Hooch is looking back on this being like, you have no idea mate. <laughs> but that's all part of the fun, right? The problem I've actually got is in my own house. Now these plants here may look like they're getting enough light, but that window does not supply anywhere near enough light. And unlike the studio where I have a massive 800 watt LED providing all the light to the plants, I don't particularly want a massive LED fixture hanging in my own home. And you can see visibly that these plants are struggling for light. The leaves on this Monstera are getting smaller as it grows, which is not right. And all of the leaves are facing this way. Some of these plants are almost beyond saving. And that's all because there's just not enough light in here. So when reached out to me, I was actually kind of excited. So we're gonna try and bring this Monstera back to life using these. So in the box, instructions, poles. So I'd say these are the poles that you mount the lights on. The lights themselves with a cord on off switch, dimming and brightness. Power cable, American, hmm and the base. I'm gonna set these up. They'll just screw together, find two Australian adapters, <laughs> and then we can test the par that comes off them because I know exactly how much a Monstera needs to thrive, and I'm very interested to see if this provides that. The beauty of these poles is you can unscrew them. This top pole is you need to be um, attached to your grow, your grow lights. Uh, but you could have that at this height. And then as your plant gets taller, you just add sections on to the pole because your plants are gonna get bigger. And this is how you keep up with that. Add our grow light to our stand like so. And there it is. We can have our lights surrounding our plants like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and then you just pop your plant onto the stand. Yeah, I like it. Okay, there's one. Okay, so the real question is, how do they test? Are they appropriate for plants? Let's plug them in. They are actually really bright. I've turned all the studio lights off. So for those of you watching that aren't intimate with the grow light industry, the way that we test lights is with PAR, photosynthetically active radiation. And the way that we measure that is with a PAR sensor. Now these are quite expensive. This is worth about a bit over a thousand dollars. It measures the PPFD. Essentially, it's just a unit of measurement that measures the amount of light radiation that is usable by the plants, the spectrum of light that is usable by the plants. As far as I'm aware, monsteras and a lot of other indoor plants require 100 to 350 PPFD. So that's what we're aiming for 
with these lights. And I actually think we're gonna achieve that because they are quite bright. I'm gonna turn one of the lights off. I turn it all the way up, that is full brightness there. And we can measure. Here is where you would generally have your indoor plant, about six inches away from the light. We are achieving at that six inches about 150 par. That's what we want to achieve. 150 is about right to keep your plants happy. Um, and again, over here, I'll just show you with, with the plant that is in place. Uh, I'm achieving about 160 par and 200 par on the surface of the leaf. That's 230, 240 par. That's what these plants want. I reckon these lights will actually give us some really, really nice growth. Now, just because I can, I'm actually gonna repot these two guys into a new pot that I have invented, a self-watering version of the Hooch multi-bucket. So this is essentially letting me film two things at once, uh, which I love efficiency. And this is it. So this is just a hooch multi-bucket paired with a 3D printable base. Um, and this is watertight, so you can just, you know, feed into it. Um, on the bottom, it has a net cup, which drops down into the water and wicks up from below. Pretty simple stuff. Nothing extravagantly new. Self-watering pots have been around forever. I've just made the multi-bucket one of them. So I'm gonna replant my two monsteras into these and we can set up the time-lapse. Into the base, I'm just packing some cocoa into our net cup because the media I'm going to be using is a cocoa scoria, but the scoria doesn't wick. So we want that cocoa to be in that net cup. My monstera is already in a cocoa scoria mix, so I do not need to change the mix. And because this is going to be self-watering, this will never ever really need to be watered from the top. Um, so I'm just gonna cover the top with scoria so that we don't get any algae on top because that cocoa will wick. The other one's actually still printing. So um, I'm just gonna use the moldy bucket legs to hold it off the ground with the net cup for now. And then once it's finished printing, we can just remove the legs and drop it into the self-watering pot. Moss pole, like so. And over here on my all the gear set, I've got a little bit of space that they can call home. Now this is good because it's not gonna be affected by any grow lights other than the ones I'm setting up. Once that's printed, I'll drop it in, water them with hydroponic nutrient, just uh, leafy greens, the Campbell's Diamond Blue and set up the time-lapse cameras and see how they grow. So, heaps to talk about. The start of that time lapse was exactly two months ago. It was 22nd of March and is now the 21st of May. So, it's been exactly two months since I set these lights up and the plants have been growing. That time lapse was the first month. We saw the first leaf unfurl on our standard Monstera. And since then, another one has unfurled, which we'll talk about in a second. And unfortunately, the time-lapse camera on my tire constellation failed, but we have two new leaves appear on that tire constellation. 
and I'm really happy with this result. That's about one new leaf per month. And before this Monstera was under these lights, I hadn't had a new leaf on it for months. So there is a distinct improvement in growth. Actually, this one has been behaving quite strangely. I think due to its dormancy and the sudden burst of energy that it received, it threw out a massive leaf and there is absolutely no fenestration on this leaf. Now I'm in a Discord chat with a bunch of other plant creators and we've brainstormed and we don't particularly know why this leaf pattern has emerged. My best guess and what we all came to the conclusion was that the plant was regressing as of this leaf. As you can see, the leaf size was getting smaller and it was regressing back to a non-fenestration state when it started receiving a bulk amount of energy and the leaf structure was already determined once it started growing, which means that the leaf's structure remained the same, although the size changed. This is a really good indication that the plant is getting enough light, how healthy the leaves are. As you can see, the color of green has changed from this really dark, lifeless color. And as the leaves have developed, you get into this really lush green, which is more pronounced than usual, I think. Now, I wanna talk about this leaf because I actually think that this is not the light. I think that this is uh, a nutrient issue. I think I've overfed these plants with hydroponic nutrient. And that is what we are seeing with the necrosis. And this necrosis has actually developed around the edge of the leaf whilst it was in formation. It unfurled and it was already there. So I think this was actually a me error um, because I was feeding them hydroponic nutrient at the strength that I usually feed hydroponic nutrient to my super productive fruiting plants. So this is telling me that I need to bump down from like the 2.5 EC that I'm using and get right back down to just a leafy greens nutrient, which I should have known really. And I actually am getting this problem um, on some of my other plants. Now this is my favorite Thai constellation. And as you can see here, the entire front section of this leaf has had necrosis within the formation of the leaf. Now, if you have any insight on this, let me know because this is just a best guess on my behalf. I think that I'm going to need to reduce the nutrient solution because this plant has been going absolutely nuts. It's been moving from small leaves to large leaves to large leaves and this leaf has come out absolutely deformed and I'm pretty sure this is an overfeeding of the plant. And it is quite strange because this Thai constellation has absolutely no sign of it and it was fed the same nutrients. So color me confused. The hooch bucket self-watering pots worked like a dream. I just came along and topped them up with too strong nutrient obviously, but if you're gonna use them as a wicking bucket and feed the appropriate amount of nutrients, they're perfect. In fact, this whole setup is ideal uh, for indoor plants, especially your house plants that require like just canopy amounts of photosynthetically active radiation. These lights performed exceptionally well. If you're someone that kills your plants regularly, this is something that I can definitely recommend because it takes the guesswork out of plant placement when it comes to windows or darker houses in general. It allows you to remove a consideration from your indoor plants and paired with a self-watering pot, I think this is a foolproof solution that could be the answer to a lot of people's indoor plant problems. I'll leave links in the description to where you can get the hooch buckets. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time on Hoochos.